Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to today's service in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Today we are continuing with uh, our September message, My Father's House. Today's topic is what is happening in my father's house. May God bless you as you join us today, as you flow with us, as you, you, you consider the word of God, as you lay the word of God in your heart. Because what is going on all over the world calls for concern, especially in the body of Christ. My father's house is a house of praise. My father's house is a house of prayer. My father's house is a house of worship. My father's house is a consecrated house. It's a house of glory. Therefore, we want So cautiously stop what is going on in our father's house in my father's house that is not of God whatever that is going on in the body of Christ in the church that is not of God must be stopped because the end time will not sweep us all the end time will not swallow us all because of greed and avarice and so may the Lord help us as we listen to his word. Even today, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I want us to go to the book of Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Praise the Lord. Mark chapter 11. I will be reading from verse 17. Mark chapter 11. Let me go back a little bit to verse 14. And Jesus has said and said, How to eat? Let's, let's go a little bit up from verse 12. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Jesus was hungry. He wanted to eat something. Jesus was hungry. When Jesus comes to his house, when Jesus comes to his father's house, how will he feel? Praise the Lord. How will he feel when he comes to his father's house? That is the question today. How will Jesus feel if he comes to his father's house today and meet what is going on? How is God going to feel if he comes into his house? And so the Bible said that Jesus went, when they went to Bethany, he was hungry. And he saw a fig tree afar off having leaves. And he came if by adventure. He might find any thing thereon. He might find any fruit thereon. And when he came to eat, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. I want to read it from American Standard Version. Verse 12. And seeing... Verse 12, and on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily, he might find anything thereon. And when he came to eat, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said to eat. 
No man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. And his disciples hear it. No man shall eat out of you after today forever. No good thing shall come out of you after today forever. When Jesus went to Bethany, it's like Jesus coming to his house. Jesus coming to the house of God. Jesus coming, or God coming to his house to minister to those who are crying unto him, to minister to those who are petitioning unto heaven. And then he came to a church like the, the, the like the the church in Bethany or the fig tree in Bethany that was expected to bear fruit after this after he saw fresh leaves, plenty of succulent and fresh leaves, plenty of crowds in the church, plenty of dignitaries in the church, so many flamboyant people, worshippers in quote, in the church. He came there and he saw the church like the fig tree. He saw the power of thinking that this church is a church that glorifies his father who is in heaven. And Jesus went into the church Perhaps he will find something good. The true worship from this church, the true worship from this body of Christ, the true worship from this congregation of saints, supposedly. And when he came in, like the fig tree, he discovered that it was just fresh leaves and no fruit there. No fruit thereof. Nobody in the church that has the fruit of love. Nobody in the church that has the fruit of Christ. Nobody in the church that has the fruit of righteousness. Nobody in the church came to be salvaged, seeking salvation. Nobody in the church came actually to worship God. And you know what God did when he saw that fig tree? He said, oh my God. I thought this fig tree was going to take away my hunger. I thought this thought was going to make me happy. Just like that fig tree could not make Jesus happy because there was no fruit. So many churches, so many body of Christ, so many organizations that were called church here and there, they have not satisfied God. They have not satisfied the yearning of Christ. They have not satisfied the tears of Christ. They have not shown for the purpose why Jesus went to the cross of Calvary to die for the sake of mankind. The church has failed Christ. What is going on in the church is something that we have to worry about. When Jesus went to that fig tree, he saw only leaves. When Jesus comes to some of these crowded churches, some of these mega churches, some of these medium churches, some of these mushroom churches, some of them, there is no fruit there. There is nothing to satisfy Christ there. There is nothing to make Christ to be happy in those bodies of Christ. Yet we are called church. Yet we are called children of the light. Yet we are called believers. And yet, those who see us are far off, we thank you, Christian, born again. But you are not born again. Like the fig tree could not satisfy the curiosity of Christ. Could not satisfy, could not, could not give Christ what he wanted, the fruit that he wanted. How many of us in the body of Christ how many of us at the church today will do that that will please God? How many messages in the church today will be the exact word that God wants us to minister? Or have we doctored the, 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 the message? Have we altered the message of the gospel? Just because we want something, we want something out of it. 
praise the Lord. We are likening the body of Christ to the victory that Jesus caused. We pray that the church will not be caused at this time. Because the church needs God now more than ever before. Because what is going on right now, all over the world, against the body of Christ, requires us to be at right standing with God himself. So that God will not spew us out of his mouth. So that God will not reject the church and allow the enemy to overrun the church. Let us remember that when Jesus approached the fig tree in Bethany, that fig tree disappointed Jesus. Let not the church disappoint Jesus. Let not the body of Christ disappoint Jesus. Let not those mega churches, those crowds disappoint Jesus. Let us watch and pray. Let us watch and pray. May God help the church. May God help us. May God help the body of Christ so that we will not derail. So that when Jesus will come, we shall not be found wanting. And the Bible said that when he saw that victory afar off, seeing the church afar off, seems that it glorifies God. Seeing the auditorium, 1,000, uh, 100,000 uh, auditorium, 100,000 sitting, 100,000 standing. All kinds of protocols, all kinds of ushers, all kinds of pastors, all kinds of associates in the church, all kinds of protocols, all kinds of regalia to distinguish us from others. And when Jesus comes in there, there is nothing that pleases Jesus. Just like the fig tree, there's nothing that makes Jesus happy. And you know what? If Jesus come to such church and people who gathered in the name of church and they say they have come to worship God and they say they have come to serve their God and they discover that all that they have been doing there is nothing but vanity upon vanity, it will be a disaster. It will be bad news. If you watch what is going on globally, you know that we need God right now more than before. You will understand that we need God right now more than before all over the world. In Africa, in Asia, in Europe, in America, we need God. Because there is, there is a gang up going on in, in the realm of the spirit and even in the physical against the body of Christ, against the children of God. Against the children of light, darkness is gathering, darkness is ganging up against the body of Christ. And we cannot overcome by the kind of attitude we present in the church these days. My father's house is a house of honor. My father's house is a house of praise. My father's house is not a house of joke. It's not a house of comedy. It's not a house of business. Just yesterday or two days ago, some few days ago, not up to three days, the Shanghai, the, 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 the Shanghai group have, have started ganging up again. Now that Iraq has joined the Shanghai group, now they are teaming up for the final battle, the Armageddon. And we are here playing church. We are here playing crowd. We're here playing fl flamboyancy. What the, 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 the cost of the wristwatch we wear, the cost of the of the of the, of the regalia we wear as, as pastors, as bishops, as popes. The kingdom of darkness is gathering against the church. The final battle is about to be unleashed. Now that the Iran has joined the the, the, the the Shanghai group, they're going to team up, not only to fight Israel, but to fight the body of Christ. And all that we do is just go to the church to, to organize comedy, to, to, to turn the, the, the church into a motivational, motivational arena where we can speak sweet words, where we can laugh. But what is going on is 
more dangerous than what you think. If God be for us, who can be against us? But if God be against us, you know you are finished. May it not happen to the body of Christ. For my father's house is a house of power. My father's house is a house of deliverance. My father's house is a house of freedom. Verse 14. And Jesus answered and said unto that fig tree, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. What a cause! A beautiful fig tree that had all kinds of beautiful leaves, like the kind of dresses, like the kind of attire we see in the church today. It's a competition arena. arena. Competition arena in the church. That is the body of Christ. We have, we have turned the body of Christ into a pageant zone. We have turned the church into a pageant zone where you display affluence and not spirituality. And the, the victory was cursed. Only, only Jehovah knows what will happen in the day that Jesus will visit our churches? Even today, being Sunday service, if God begin to begin to visit all the churches and as He's supposed to be, because He is supposed to uh, to be in His house today to receive praises and worship, to receive true worship and true service from those who have chosen to serve Him. It will be a disaster that when he comes, he will just release curse and then leave the church. And then you continue your dance. You continue, you continue your, 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 your juju dance, your palango dance. And then at the end, you will say, hey, today's service was so powerful. Or if you see, if you see the singer, the worship leader was too much. The pastor was too much. But all, all you went there to do is to buy and sell. All you went there to do is to check out customers who will buy some of your, your items, some of the things you are selling. All you went there to do is to buy bangles and wear it. And it becomes, it becomes a, I don't know. I don't know. That is what you went for. You buy one on the left, buy one on the right, put one on your head, put one on your pictures. Like some people, I went to one brother's uh, house some years ago, and I saw a lot of a lot of rosaries on the ceiling fan, a lot of rosaries on television, rosaries on this thing. And I shouted, I said, brother, what is going on? Have you gone mad? Have you gone mad? What is going on? He said, he said, my brother, uh, that, that is to show I am Catholic. I am Catholic. And some of us, you know, some of us are, are, are being ordained Mary. A man being ordained Mary in the church. A man volunteered himself to be called Mary. To be ordained Mary. You know what Mary means? Mary means bitterness. And for God... To pass through the womb of bitterness to come to this earth was to take away every bitterness in the body of Christ. And you, you want to, you have found you, 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 you have been ordained, you have been coronated Mary in the church, and you are happy. And then you carry all the Marian, uh, all the Marian shrine into your house. And you are telling me you have your own altar. That is your personal altar. Be careful. Because the end time <laughs> is not um, the battle of the end time. It's not something to joke with. It's not something to joke with. It is a serious matter. If God causes you, then you are finished. And his disciples heard when he caused that victory. No man will be able to eat from you. No man will be able to eat from you from today. 
That shall not be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Verse 15. And they came to Jerusalem. And Jesus went into the temple. A replica of the fig tree appeared there. And began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple. And overthrew the tables of money changers. And the seats of them that sold those. The church is a business arena. The church has been turned into a place of bangles. Where you buy bangles in order to be protected. Where you buy olive oil in order to be protected. Where you buy a special soap. Where you buy no more ground in it. It is written that those who believe in Christ will never, shall never perish, but have everlasting life. And if any one of you is in pain, if any one of you is in trouble, call upon his name and then he will answer and show you great and mighty things. That is what the word of God says. Not that bangle that will save you. It is not the soap that will save you. It is not the oil that will save you. Though the Bible says, is any among you sick, let the elders of the church and learn that person with oil. But not the one that you have to buy. If you didn't buy from the church, the oil will not work. That is business in the house of God. And God is not happy about it. Praise the Lord. God will never be happy about it. The Bible says, and then he went into Jerusalem, and he went into the temple. He went into the house. He went into his father's house. And he began to cast them out. Those that sold and bought in that temple. And he overthrew the tables of, of money changers and the seats of those who sold those. And he would not suffer. He would not allow that any man, he would not permit that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. He should not permit the business, the business that is going on in the church. After one message, it turns to uh, it turns to a booklet. One Sunday message, one booklet. And for you to be able to receive from God, you have to buy ten of it with in, uh, with the exorbitant price in in, in, in that matter. Every message, one booklet. And everybody must buy it in order to receive from Papa, in order to receive from God, in order to be blessed. Business center. Business center. The Bible said that Jesus does not permit that. Jesus does not permit that. You, you can write books and write for as many as you want. But it shall just be like what we call it, hand out. Give it to them free. If they want to support, they support with free will, free will offering to support the production of those books. It's not that you, you are writing it. Today's message is one booklet, tomorrow's message is another booklet. And then, yes, your business is increasing, your books are in Amazon. Your books are in bookshops. You are increasing. You are making money. The tapes are there. You are selling and making money. That is good. But we have to be careful. We have to know that God cannot be mocked. For whatsoever man sows, he, he shall reap. Verse 17, and he taught them, saying unto them, Is not written, is it not written that my father's house or my house shall be called of all nations, the house of prayer, but you have turned it, you have made it a den of thieves. A den of thieves. 
instead of you to go to uh, eBay and sell your stuff, you want to use that platform, the church, to sell. And then you are becoming larger and larger. Pope, bishop, archbishop, big crowd, mega church. Do not allow God to spew us or to spew you out of his mouth. And the scribes and the priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him. For they feared him because all the people were astonished. All the people were astonished at his doctrine. How come that this this how come that this pastor, his own is different? And they decided this pastor that is preaching like this. Let us send DSS. Let us send the SSS. Let us send the army. Let us send some brethren. Let us send this to destroy the man of God, to destroy the church. Last year, in my church in Nigeria, a group of agents of darkness climbed the roof of the church and began to rip off the roofing, the roofing sheets. And they carry it to their homes without anybody disturbing them. They will claim the, the church. That is the attack that we are seeing here. The church has disturbed us for too long. Let us chase them out of this place. I fought that battle from 2003 up to 2020. And I said, you know what? Go and Dust your feet according to the instruction of the Lord. When you enter into a town, into a place to preach the word, we have fought these people. We have tolerated them since 2003. 2003, 2004. Up to 2020. And I said, you know what? This battle is not of us. The battle is of the Lord. I say, you know what, pastors, elders, everybody, please take away whatever that is there. As they have taken away the roof, so shall the Lord take away the coverings over them. So shall the Lord take away the coverings over their families. And remember, it is not the day that you cut a tree that the tree will dry up. It is not the day that you cut down a tree that the leaves will dry up. They did it last year, 2020, January. They did it between the 5th of January and the 6th of January. Ripped off the roofs. The Bible said, and the scribes and the chief priests, they heard it and they sought how they might destroy the church, how they might destroy him. For they feared him. Because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. They ripped up beautiful get assembly in Portacot. Ripped up the roof. While those people were there, people were living in the church, in the church vestry. A group of satanists came and ripped off the roof of the church. And I said, no, leave the battle for the Lord. Go and dust off your feet. And live quietly. Live quietly. If there are things you can take, go to safety. Take them to safety. And leave the battle between them and God. And I start today to, 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 to prophesy that those who climb the roof, those who give instruction to climb the roof of the church or beautiful get assembly on um, equal road. River State of Nigeria. Those who, who did that, what happened to the fig tree will happen to them. It will happen to them, happen to their families, happen to anyone that has connection to that. Because God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man sows, he shall reap. This is the first time I'm talking about it. First time. 
For if the church is a mega, it's as mega as though they wouldn't have done that. They cannot go to, to a, a shrine in my village to do that. Thunder will smell them instantly. But because God is slow to anger, they can do it and say that God cannot do anything. But I assure you, watch the lives of those who were involved in that dastardly act. Your families will perish just at once. Praise the Lord. I want to take you to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 19. Verse 40 to 47. Luke chapter 19. The final battle is set. And the Lord will fight for the church. The Lord will fight for you, brother. The Lord will fight for us. They cannot just have a field way. They can't. The Lord will fight for the body of Christ. They are ganging up. They are ganging up. They are joining the China War. The war of Armageddon. Organized and being organized against the church. They are doing it in China. They are doing it all over the world. They are ganging up already. They want to go and fight Israel. As they are fighting the physical Israel, as they are planning against the physical Israel, they are also planning against the spiritual Israel. But God will give us victory. God will give the church victory. And this victory will come in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This victory will come in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This victory will come in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I don't care how many of them are involved, but they the Lord be for us. No man can be against us. No nation can be against us. They may have destroyed the church, but the ministry has not been destroyed. The anointing has not been destroyed. That's what I told the pastors of Beautiful Get Assembly in Port Harcourt. I said they may, they may have destroyed the roof. They may have destroyed Taking the roofs to their own houses, coming to the house of God to steal, not only stealing anything, but they stole the roof and sheets, stole all that belongs to God, all that I suffered for for years to build, all that I suffered for under empty stock with my household. In order to build a church. And a group of clowns came and said they are tougher than God. <laughs> ah, the battle line is drawn. And then you will see it. You will see it. And when it will happen, <laughs> when it will happen, you may not you, you may not remember what you did. Luke chapter 9, 19, from verse 40. Hallelujah. Who can battle with the Lord? And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stars would immediately cry out. No matter what is going on, against you that is seeking God in truth and in spirit, against you that is serving God in truth and in spirit, there's nothing that the enemy will do to you. There's nothing that the enemy will do to the body of Christ. If you will be silent, the Bible says the stones would immediately cry out. The stones of God will cry out against those that are Troubling the church. The stones of God will be run out against them. The stones of God will be run out against those who discredit the body of Christ, who discredit the church of God. 
for their selfish ends. And they have they, they have made themselves yielding instruments to, 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 to subdue. But now we never subdue the hand of God. They have yielded themselves as, as instruments to attack the body of Christ. But don't worry. The Bible said in verse 40, I tell you that if these people should hold their peace, should be silent, the stones will be rolled out. The stones will immediately cry out. And when he was come near, he beheld the city, and then he wept over it. He beheld the city of those who are troubling the body of Christ. The city of those, the hearts of those who are who attack the church of Jesus Christ, who attack beautiful get assembly in Port Harcourt, the city of those, the families of those who went on top of the roof of the church to take off that place, those who commanded the clouds to go and de roof the church and take it to their houses. The Bible said when he sat down and fell off, when he came near, he beheld the city, and then he wept over it. Nations will weep over, over you, over your, your city. I was in that community for years, from 2003. And the Lord touched lives, raised their bodies. The deaf heard, the lame walked, the mad people with mad madness were healed. People with incurable sicknesses and diseases, they were healed in that church. People's lives were transformed. The poor became rich in that church. The hopeless became hopeful in the Lord. They became savage. And one day, somebody woke up and said, I have money. I have bought the church. Bought the land, bought the church. And so, I'm taking them off. Without my God. The Bible said that when Jesus approached the place, he saw the city and then he wept over it. Not only will God weep over you. The whole world will weep over you. All those that were involved in that dastardly act in January 2020, going into the beautiful get assembly, the roof of the church, chasing worshippers out of that church. And you hear nothing and you think the Lord has kept quiet. There shall be a visitation, not only to you, but to your generation of born, to your family. If all the time we stand there, we were there for good, we were there to, to help the community. And then all that you paid us was that the Lord will avenge for us. The Lord will avenge for the church. And, and Elijah said, If I be a man of God, no fire come down from heaven and lick up the sacrifice. And it happened so. If I be a man of God, those who were involved, there is a, a fire that will be kindled right from heaven that will visit your destiny, that will visit your generation. So that uh, uh, the eyes, the eyes that see you will run and fear the Lord. The ears that hear what will happen to all of you will run and fear the Lord. For thus says the Lord. And Jesus said, if thou had known, even you, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now you don't know, <laughs> but now they are hidden from thy eyes, because you don't know what brings peace. What brings peace is my father's house. The church 
is the solution to this to this deadly world. The church is the solution. The church is the salvation of the earth. If you had known, you wouldn't be fighting the church. But now they are hidden from you because you are stupid, you are useless. For the days shall come upon thee. And thy enemies shall cast a trench about thee. And compass thee round and keep thee in on every side. God is raising a terrible enemy for his own enemies. For the enemies of the church, God will raise terrible enemies. A day is coming and this is that day. That those who discredit the body of Christ, who discredit the church. I use beautiful get assembly in Portacot as a point of contact today in this message. A day is coming. One of your enemies will gang up against you. And Satan will be on your, uh, your, your, your right hand side to persecute you. And then you will know that God cannot be mocked. You will know that God cannot be mocked. And shall let thee even with the ground and thy children within thee. And they shall not live in thee one stone upon another. Because thou who knowest not the time of thy visitation. You don't know what beautiful God has come to do at Rumame. You don't know what God has come to do. Where those church, those, those churches that you have discredited, you don't know. You don't know why God brought them there. You don't know that you think you have power. You have done the worst. But the Lord will raise a standard against you and your generation. The Lord will raise a standard against you. And your generation yet unborn. So that you will know that it is God that reigned in the face of men. And he went into the temple again and he began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, My father's house is the house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. And then he taught daily in the temple by the chief priests, by the chief priests, by the chief priests, and the scribes again, and the chief of the people who thought they had money, they sought to destroy him, and they could not find what they might use. For all the people were very attentive to hear him. Those of you that preach the right word, those of you that do the right thing in the, in, the, in the church, they cannot do anything. Even if they succeed today, they will pray for it. God will give you a larger auditorium. God will give us a larger, a larger church that he will use to save many. A larger church that he will use to save many. Praise the Lord. I may not read all the scriptures. For the hour has gone far. But I want to assure you that you belong to the body of Christ. That no matter the gang up that is going on against you, no matter the gang up that is going on against the body of Christ, you will not be affected. The Lord will fight for us and we will hold our peace. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Lord will fight for us and then we will hold our peace. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Lord will fight for the church. The Lord will fight for you. Even as a child of God, as a true child of God, the Lord will fight for you. The Lord will fight for you. This week, you will see all your battles being won. You will win all your battles. You will win all your struggles. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God will visit you. God will trouble your enemies until they leave you alone. Those who say you will not have peace, they will not have peace until they leave you alone. When they leave you alone, then they will have peace. If they refuse to leave you alone, then whatever they see, they shall take it. 
For the word of God said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. And whosoever that does that is going contrary to the word of God. And whatever he sees, he will take it. May you prosper this week. May you advance this week. May the windows of heaven be opened unto us this week. In the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth. Those of you that find it difficult to eat, the Lord will visit you. Those of you that find it difficult to drink water, you have no money to pay for your medical bills. The Lord will visit you. In the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth. You have no money to buy food and eat. The Lord will visit you. The angel of the Lord will visit you. Remember that the, the woman called Mary, who begat Jesus, the Virgin Mary, they were all very poor. But the angel of the Lord visited them and spoke to Mary, Thou art favored among women. I speak to you under the sound of my voice. This week, I release the angel of favor to visit you. I release the angel of transformation to visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you will not fail. You will not be disappointed. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, from henceforth, things will begin to work for you. Things will begin to work for you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, from henceforth, you will not be found wanting anymore. Praise the Lord. God will work for you. Jesus will work for you. Whatever you lay your hands shall prosper. Whatever you touch shall prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may the Lord visit you this week. May Jehovah talk things around in your life today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whatever that is going on in the body of Christ, whatever that is happening in the body of Christ, I pray that the angels of God will visit these churches. From now, the angels will go and put all things right in the body, in, the, in, in his house, in the house of God, so that God will not allow the enemy to run over us. In the name of Jesus, heart of mercy. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for you are God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. If you believe this, shout a better amen. May you be blessed in the morning. May you be blessed in the day. May you be blessed in the night. Even as you are sleeping, may the angels of God surround your building, surround your house, surround your home. No attack from the dream world shall affect you. In the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, you are blessed and you are lifted. In the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, 